guys, it's me, Crystal, and today I'm going to show you how to make this crochet kitchen towel holder. For this project, I'm using some worsted weight cotton yarn, and one skein will be way more than enough for this. I'm also using a 5 millimeter crochet hook, and then I have also a 3 inch um, wooden ring that's the inside of a little embroidery hoop. The inside opening is about 3 inches, and the outside is about 3 and a quarter. So then to start, we're going to make a slip knot and put it on our hook, but then I also realized I need to put the hook inside the ring and then put the slip knot on. So I took it off again and then pulled it through the ring like that. So this is how we're going to start. Then we're going to single crochet around the ring. So yarn over and pull it through. I'm sorry, that went off camera for a second there. So here we are. Then you're going to insert your hook into the ring and pull up a loop like that and then yarn over on the other side like that and then you just pull it through both loops and that's your single crochet and you're going to repeat that until the whole ring is filled which took me approximately 60 single crochets for the size ring so if you use a different size ring or like a slightly smaller one, you might not need as many stitches to fill it. For this part, it really doesn't matter exactly how many stitches you make around your ring, just as long as it's filled in completely and it looks good. That's all that really matters for this part. Once you get all the way around, you're going to insert your hook into the first single crochet and just make a slip stitch to join the two sides. And now we're going to start making the hanging loop. So chain two. Then you're going to half double crochet in the same stitch that you're coming out of, the one that you slip stitched into. And in the next eight stitches, so you'll have nine half double crochets all together. Okay, that was row one. Now we're going to turn and do row two. So chain two again. You're going to chain two at the beginning of each row. And then you're just going to half double crochet in each stitch that you just made going across. So nine times all together. And you're going to repeat this. So this is row two that you're starting now. We're going to repeat this for 12 rows total. So you got this row and then you'll have 10 more rows after this. And once you get 12 rows finished, we will make the buttonhole row. Here I've got three rows done, and I'm just going to continue on until I have 12 all together. And here we go, I got my 12 rows. Now in this row, we're going to do the buttonhole. So you're going to go ahead and chain two, just like we've been doing. And then you're going to do a half double crochet in the first four stitches. And then when we get to the, the fifth stitch, we're going to slip stitch into there. And then you're going to chain six times. And then you're going to slip stitch back into that same stitch. And that's our buttonhole, or the beginning of our buttonhole. And then you're going to half double crochet in the next four stitches. And there's the beginning of our buttonhole. And we're going to continue it in the next couple of rows. So you're going to go ahead and turn. And this time you're just going to chain one. And then you're going to single crochet in the first four stitches. And 
And then you're going to make six single crochets in the loop. So I'm just going right around the chain. Then you're going to single crochet in the last four stitches. And there's that row. And then for the next row, you're going to turn and you're going to just slip stitch in the first stitch. So no chain this time. Then you're going to single crochet in the second. Half double crochet in the third stitch. And then double crochet in the fourth stitch. Then you're going to skip the first single crochet of the loop. So it's the next stitch. You're going to skip that one right there. And instead you're going to single crochet in the next four stitches. So one single crochet in each of the next single crochets. Then you're going to skip the next single crochet that's around the loop right here. You're going to just skip that one and you're going to double crochet in the next one over. Then you're going to half double crochet in the next one. Then single crochet in the next stitch. And the last stitch you'll just make a slip stitch. And then we just got one more row to complete. So we're going to turn and chain one. And then we're just going to single crochet in each stitch going across. And this time there'll be 12 stitches. All right, now we're finished crocheting. So we're going to go ahead and cut our yarn and then you're going to just pull the tail through the loop that's on your hook and give it a little pull to tighten it up a little bit. Then you just have to weave in your starting and finishing ends. So I have my large eye needle here and I recommend that you figure out which side's going to be the inside and weave it to that side. Then just cut your excess yarn and you're going to repeat that with your starting end. And I just wove it up under where the hoop or the ring was. And then cut the excess yarn. Now we're going to sew on a button. So I have this one inch button here and just a needle and thread. And I'm just sewing it on with a needle and thread instead of more yarn because my needle wouldn't fit through the holes in the button. So you could either sew it on with yarn or thread. <laughs> Just hold it there at the base of the towel holder and then what I did is I have a knot on the end of my thread. I have it doubled over and then I just pulled it until it was not quite all the way through because obviously that knot's probably not going to stay in the crochet. So you'll flip it over and then just open up the thread and you see you have the knot there. 
from your starting end and then you're going to just feed your needle through and pull it tight and then it'll kind of hold it in place and you don't have to worry about the knot slipping through or anything. And then you can just go ahead and sew your button on as usual. I went through several times to make sure it was nice and secure. Once you're finished sewing, you can just flip it over and just tie a knot in the thread really, really good. And cut off the excess. And then our towel holder is complete. So go ahead and test it. Make sure the button fits through the hole. Like I said, this one inch button should fit just fine. And there you have it. I used a really large wooden ring for this, but it is really convenient. You can easily thread a towel in there and you don't have to try to like deal with it not fitting. And you can just hang it on your stove or on your refrigerator door handle or wherever you want to have a towel handy in your kitchen. And it's super convenient and also cute. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. And if you did, please leave a like, comment, and be sure to subscribe so you don't miss any of my future videos. Thanks for watching.